listen the weddings were just that the weddings exactly what we expected <laughs> What's up? How you doing? Ray of Sunshines. I am your girl, Talisa Ray, self-love advocate and wife coach. If you are new here, sit down, click the subscribe button, and join my family, La Familia, the Rays, okay? We are the Ray of Sunshines over here. All we do is shine bright, okay? Even when it's dark outside, even when you can't see the sun over here, we still shining. Okay, so we are reviewing... Uh, what is this called? Love is Blind season 7 episode number 12 the final episode before we get to the reunion Okay, the reunion which is what I'm waiting on leap of faith Baby and the way I wanted to smack the shit out of Ramses. Okay, my little heart for Marissa like you made her feel like she was she was it like you were choosing her baby when she was crying and they were having those conversations i was just like what are we doing why 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 and why are we doing this why would you do this to her why would you wait till the 11th hour like they was getting married in two days because you know they picked up the conversation where they left off and they were in the room and i didn't realize that it was as detrimental as it was going to be like he looked sullen he looked um you know very detached devoid of emotion um you know episode 11 but i was not expecting for the for the man to say you too much after i wasn't didn't i tell y'all didn't i tell y'all like when we first met them and you know she was like my energy is a lot and people tend to like me they like me and then they don't because they i'm a lot of energy i so resonate with her like the way she felt baby <laughs> be careful of them men that are emotionally mature too because they be lying to themselves <laughs> that sound like it's bitterness coming and maybe it is slightly a little bit some okay but nevertheless Nevertheless, let's see what I wrote down. He starts opening up about his previous marriage and the divorce, talking about how, you know what, I didn't realize she was as broken hearted as she was and I don't want you to be that way, sir, 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 sir. What, what? Comparison is absolutely the thief of joy and you just stole all her joy because you wanted to talk to your family, your brother and them, and they wanted to remind you of things and you feel like uh, you don't, you brush in emotionally and not rationally and logically and so this is not going to work out for you. Say what now? I'm just really glad that he didn't marry her and then break her heart after he married her. Now, you know what I'm saying? Now we all looking like she should have been with Bodan. I mean, now we looking like, I mean, because I love black love, but every single time, these niggas will embarrass you. Ooh, this sounds just so harsh, but like, I feel like her big sister. Like, we experience like the same heartbreak. You know what I'm saying? Like, you was feeding her life. You pretended like you accepted her for who she was, baby. And you did not. You did not. You did not. She was all in really, really fast. I, I understand that. But he was making, making it like me too. All I wrote down is he does not want to be married. Oh, no. And the more he talked, the more I wanted her to just stop talking. Like it felt like she was just begging him to stay, begging him, please, I think you're making a mistake. Let him make the mistake because what's for you is for you. I mean, it's a, that is one of the hardest lessons to learn. Like, no. One of the hardest lessons to learn is to um, Really be like, you know what, I enjoyed what I enjoyed. It was good while it lasted. These were the things that I like and these were the lessons that I learned. And then moving on, that's probably the hardest thing to be able to do in the midst of because all you could feel is heartbreak. And I'm talking from experience. All you know is heartbreak. Like, you've been lying to me this whole time? Like, I would have preferred you to be honest. 
Like, if you're really emotionally mature, the way he, like, was showing up for us, okay, because when I say us, I mean us as the audience, the way he was showing up for us made it seem like he was able to communicate himself. But then for communicate well and his desires, wants, and needs, all right, Prime, these niggas be lying. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and we just have to really, like, hear what people are saying and for her to say you never said anything like she said i understand that you need the time to yourself and i'm willing to give you that but that she's a lot of energy you know living with somebody her how she comes home all of the things all of the things i wrote down anytime you have to con convince somebody that you're the one anytime you have to like be like, I think you're making a mistake or this felt right, you felt it. Anytime that you feel like you are convincing someone that you are begging them to stay with you, baby, it's a no. But in the, in the, in the process, you don't feel like that. In the process, you're just trying to explain, like, I know you felt what I felt. I know you feel like you're going to make a mistake. But the moment I start feeling like that is the moment I disconnect. The moment I feel like I got to try too hard to convince you, I disconnect. And then I go through the heartbreak. Okay, this is me real life. Like, and then I do the processing. Then I tell myself, these are the things that I enjoyed in this relationship. I saw a TikTok once and the girl was like, when you, when you break up with someone, there are lessons that you need to learn. Some that you don't, that teach you that you don't want to be in a relationship, what you don't want from a relationship and what you did. And the way, um, to navigate or de decipher between the thing the two is what is it that you enjoyed about your relationship about the person that you were with those are things that you want in your future relationships and what didn't you like those are things that you can subtract i know that sounds like common sense and that is easy but baby let me tell you it's not always so cut and dry i did write down I was proud of her being able to be so vulnerable, but she had been vulnerable the entire time and he was mirroring her. Um, I already said it, but I wrote down her biggest fear from the beginning was that he was going to think that she was too much. And I wrote down it'd be the same thing. Like the first couple months, these dudes be thinking I'm the best thing going. <laughs> They love my energy, they love my insightfulness, they love my honesty, they love my urban hood girl feel, they love the way I dress, they love my aesthetic, they love all the things. And then when they recognize that it's growth in front of them, baby, I'm not their favorite no more. <laughs> uh, when, they, when they recognize that I'm pretty and that other people think I'm pretty and it's, I'm not their favorite no more, like, it's not a competition. It's not a, it's not a competition. I don't know. I don't know. I really felt for her. Y'all, what y'all thought? Let me know down below in the comments. He, I wrote down, he let other people's opinions cloud his judgment. And maybe the whole getting married thing was too fast and that's what he should have said. You know, he, when the cameras was off, right? When the cameras were off, he should have shared with her. We're moving too fast. I love you. I mean, he did say I love you. I just, it's just too much. It's just too much. <sighs> I cried when she was like, just one time I want somebody to be sure about me. I want somebody to choose me. I cried because I know that feeling of wanting someone to be sure about you and wanting somebody to choose you. But what you have to learn to do, baby, this is, this is a nugget. I'm gonna drop it for you. Choose your damn self every single time and be sure about you. If we learn to choose ourselves every day, practicing detachment is going to be easy because we don't own nothing. We don't own people. We don't own their thoughts and ideas. We only, we only know what we got going on. So the moment we figure out how do we love you and practice detachment, knowing that nothing is forever, like her mother said. All things come to an end, whether that be in death or just because you guys don't fit. Everything has an expiration. So the moment we can learn to really practice detachment, the moment we, we can be better. Like, anyway.
I wrote down, she's mature as fuck. She got up and hugged him, hugged him and cried in his shoulder and sat down. Like, she's mature as fuck to be so vulnerable. Because, baby, this Virgo would have been acting like Tim. <laughs> uh, the one thing we can agree on is that I never want to see you again. Like, I would have been Tim. I would have got up and walked out. Like, oh, my poor Marissa, my poor Marissa. I didn't spend 10 minutes talking about Marissa because I was really pissed off. Because the rest of it was just the rest of it. I mean, we saw them with their bachelorette and bachelor parties. One of the things that um, Taylor has said about her and Ashley is that they were both very no-nonsense. And when they find, normally when they find stuff off, out, it's cut off, you're dead to me is what Ashley said. So I can't wait to see if him continuously lying is you're dead to me here comes the ice cream truck anytime i want to record in the middle of the day the ice cream truck is like so i'll be right back it's gonna take at least 20 minutes for it to get down the street and to get back get back where it's going okay i'm back and they gone thank god nobody wanted no ice cream or none of that but i did go down a rabbit hole looking at reels okay okay so we back and so like I was saying, I'm wondering how Ashley really is dealing with the whole Tyler situation. Now on another note, I feel like the baby mama, some of her story ain't right either. Like I really feel like both of these people have ruined this woman's life. Like, like he's not exempt for sure. And then she's just adding more more salt to the wound honey it is burning up and i feel like that there's something something i don't know what it is y'all got some more tea send it to me so i could be prepared because we're gonna go live on sunday about this week uh specifically marissa and that damn um ramses and we're gonna talk about love languages so it's wedding day you got ashley and you got tyler and they get married <laughs> they get up there and they say yes I mean, then we see Garrett and we see um, Taylor, it's wedding day, and they say yes. They say I do. I will say that I feel like Tyler and all that crying he was doing, it hit me. I don't know if I said it last time, but it hit me. Maybe he's crying because he knows that he is withholding information from a woman that he loves. A woman that is his soulmate, that is his best friend. Y'all like them quotations? Because that's what I mean. Like, because a woman that's your best friend, that you feel like is your soulmate, that you guys are connected, that the mama is saying you feel super familiar with, then you would figure out how to say something about them babies. I did like how her friends were sharing with her how the new relationship energy in re is dangerous it's dangerous for us all because during them first few months or it might even last longer than like three four five months but during them first few months everything is beautiful everything about them is great all of the things unless you are a uh, glass half half empty unless you're a skeptic um if you are open to love and just, you know, just not like bitter and stuff, baby, that's been first three months. <laughs> that's why I say, you know what? I'm just going to get a new relationship every three months. See how that go. Because it'd be great. They be thinking I'm great. I be thinking they great. And then we could go on about our business and do it again. Like rinse, wash, rinse, spin, repeat. That's the, I'm just playing, y'all. I think I'm actually ready now for a relationship. So, hey, boo. How you doing? I, I have opened my heart up to it. Wait till I see my therapist on Monday. I did like that, uh, what's her name? Ashley has said, it's all a leap of faith. It's all a leap of faith. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. No, that's not what she said. She said it's a leap of faith. I don't know, she said something about. Oh, that you, I, 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 oh, okay. She said, she talked about a leap of faith and she said something, but I wrote, you don't know what the outcome is going to be, but you are believing it will work out in your favor. That's in all of the things. Like anytime you start a new business, you write a book, you start working out, you go get your hair done, you get a new set of nails with a new, it's 
it's a leap of faith because you're just going on hope idea what you're wishing for for yourself and in the process hopefully making the your making it your reality through manifestation we finally saw tyler's mom uh and his grandma so we know that the daddy is black and then i wrote down a ashley's dad i thought that i the way that he was involved in crying about tyler i thought that ashley's dad was active in his life but come to find out baby it was pop 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 is her grandfather her mother's father who was in his in her life and when he passed she recognized the importance of or the importance of um building a relationship with her own dad right like okay cool i'm all like he giving her all this advice and stuff about you know when it get rough you know the rain and the thunderstorm and everybody wants bright days but don't want to go through the storm because you know when it's bright you know you when it's stormy you appreciate the bright days like he going through all of that but the whole time he was an absentee dad people do grow people do learn people do evolve and you know honestly um uh, he would know because of the number of hearts he broke is basically what she said I hope this has not turned Ashley off from love for another 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause it'll do it. Somebody like you open up to and that's dishonest and all of that. It'll do it. It'll do it. I really did want them to make it. I don't know what that's going to look like now with all his shenanigans. Like they seem like they meshed really well and that they could grow together and learn more things together. But now you've started this relationship off in the, on the lie. Like, and then what do I have about Garrett and Taylor? Garrett's mama. Garrett's mama is one of them mamas that feel like, um, when her son gets married she's losing her son to another woman and i get that the son gonna move way across over here on the west coast from the east coast and you're not gonna be able to go like visit and stuff all right away and all of those things but you can you're gonna be grandparents you can go as often as you'd like i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure as long as you're accepting and i feel like the dad um is cool except for the wife you know how that is like i rock with my wife she is your mama but i rock with my wife you know what i'm saying like mm, that makes sense we finally get to see taylor's dad listen to the dogs outside i wrote down his mother is something else and i love that he's not swayed by any of her shenanigans or the things that she has to say I did write down that isn't that something that both sets of parents were married on the 13th only other thing I wrote down uh, was that Taylor couldn't her dress was cute but she couldn't walk in them shoes honey she should have been in them tennis shoes the whole time or some ballerina flats or something I don't know anyway what did y'all think about this episode I mean they got married <laughs> we knew they was gonna say I do we want we want next week and I feel like I don't even want to do a review for next week, but I just want to come live and talk about it live. But what time do y'all be available? Like I work from home. So what time do y'all be available? Would you be available midday? Like, and when I say midday, like maybe, uh, I can't say like three o'clock cause then it's got time to go get Kingston, but like midday, like 12 o'clock, like one o'clock, like are y'all available midday? Like on a Friday or what? Let me know. Let me know what works good for you. I'm coming, I think, on Sunday, but basketball will be taking over my life. So just be looking for the notification that tells you that I'm going to go live, okay? I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review of Love is Blind, Season 7, Episode 12. We're waiting on a reunion. Hopefully the people that we need to see are there. I want to I wanna see Tyler and Ashley, number one. I definitely want to see Alex and Tim. I absolutely want to see Marissa go off on Ramses, because the fuck. I absolutely want um, Nick to go off on Hannah, like, because what the fuck. Um, and then just, what was this two-hour conversation about Monica <laughs> with Steven, okay? I love you in real life and want every good thing that God has in store for you, even if you don't know what that is for yourself, but I gather you're figuring it out. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I will see you on the next review.